Hi everybody, hope you're doing really well. Oh my god, I've got someone with me. What the hell? Explain yourself, who are you? Um, my name's Emma. <laughs> That'll do. Am I? No, a weirdo. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is Emma the Weirdo from uh, Sussex and we've gone exploring today and I've taken her to a place that I've been to a couple of times before but on this occasion it's, well it's really easy to access, we'll just sort of say that. So we're at Chington. Is it Chington? Chin. Cook me Haven. No, yeah, it's Cook me Haven, but it's actually called Chinton. Chinnington? Chinton? Chinton. Yeah, Chinton. Yeah, Chinton Bunker, which was a repeater station. And there's not much in there, and there's not much that survives. But the most important thing is, I'm sure a few of you have done this place, but I haven't done it for my channel, and I'm actually with someone. And she's actually an explorer as well. So, but this is your first time in a bunker, isn't it? I think so, as far as I can remember. Yeah, so let's go and explore it. So come on, let's go. You visit the East Sussex coast. Strange to think that a place like Chington Bunker exists because this well hidden site has almost been lost to time. And yet the story of this place would prove vital during World War II. Its proper title really should be Seaford GPO Repeater Station, and strangely for a while at least, the identification of this bunker became a mystery, with most people assuming it was associated with the Cuckmere Beach defences. Built in 1942, its role was as part of the preparation for the re-establishment of submarine cable links to continental Europe after D-Day. Its design is that of a long concrete covered Nissan hut set on dwarf brick walls, but more surprising is that for a relatively small bunker, the layout was noted as having six individual sections, so it's not hard to imagine how at one point this site would have been a busy place. It's after its use though that the bunker had seen a sad but yet not uncommon sight when it had been occupied by a homeless person and when at the time of recording, as you will see, most of the individual's possessions could still be seen. But worse than that, before filming we had removed some syringes that had been discarded on the floor. And it's a poignant reminder of why you have to really look where you place your feet when exploring. And it saddens me to say that when I see these sites that more support could be given so that they don't have to live in these tragic conditions. And on a personal level it is something that even though we have witnessed on this channel many times before, that I can honestly say that every time I see this it still fills me with sadness and is why sometimes there are things more important to think about than just the history we explore. Hello and welcome. I, I'm not used to filming on my own. Where are you? Where are you? Show yourself. Uh, hi. <laughs> um, so today I invited Emma out and we went, we were, the idea was we were going to spend a day out together exploring some stuff. And uh, this is a big win today because, like I said, the, I've been here twice before and the only other time to access this place, I'm not going to say, but it was a hell of a lot more difficult than it was today. So, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Just getting blinded by the thoughts. Uh, so, we, yeah, because the irony was, we'd actually bought, I bought some equipment along with me today because I was determined I wanted to show Emma some really special places around her area because she's in Sussex. And uh, yeah, so we are right in the centre of the repeater station now. And every little office room slash section would have been subdivided. Now, unfortunately, this was probably more well known for actually the homeless people that were in it. There's a, I've just realised there's some porno mags there again. Seem to be discovering a lot of those recently. And obviously, someone homeless now, it's a shame. But 
you know, this is the state of the world where people are having to live in these sort of certain places. And this is obviously designed like a Nissan hut style. So you've got this sheeting, corrugated sheeting here, and then there is a hell of a lot of turf over it. So for any of you, if, you, if you've never been to this place, picture it as in like an Anderson shelter, but a very, very big Anderson shelter. Now, this is shaped in a T design, which you probably knew from your history lesson, and that's one escape hatch. And then obviously the layout is really easy because on the exact opposite end of the corridor, which I'll just quickly take you to before we start talking about individual purposes, there is the other escape hatch as well. But as you can see, it's been painted. It's had everything done to it that you can possibly imagine. Beer cans, Emma saw, sorry, you saw needles. Yeah which we've actually, actually it was Emma who kindly removed them. Oh, Emma kindly removed those because that was just ridiculous where they were, wasn't it? Yeah. It was just, yeah. Um, yeah, there is a chair. <laughs> and uh, you've got to imagine that this is probably one of the best kept sort of places for how well out the way it is. And then if you can see up there, this one. Up there is the other escape hatch. There you go. Oh wow, actually that's changed since I last came here. That used to be way more. Well, it was a lot more different last time I was down there looking in that. Uh, yeah, it's changed actually even since the last time I came here, but it's the first time of recording it. And if you look up, there's some wooden beams. You can see when people have tried to live in here, They've been trying to sort of make it a mini home for them. And we're about, we said it the other day, didn't we? We were about, uh, where are you? We're about, oh, there we go. Stop following her. Um, we are about an hour away from Seaford, aren't we? Walk, walk. And walk, yeah. Which was sort of saying, obviously, for the homeless people or the homeless person who was here, that's the nearest town, isn't it? And then you've got the pub. Right, so. Like I said, there's not much to it. What I'm going to do is give you a rough guide in a minute as to what each section was used for. And uh, yeah, there's us looking out of it. But before I do that, first impressions, Emma, what do you think? I really like it. It's definitely different, isn't it? Yeah. But you were surprised at how well hidden it was, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, you didn't know it was there and it really wasn't covered by much at all. Because you'd said, Emma had said uh, to me before that you've driven past this place in this Yeah, yeah, on the motorbike as well, so literally. Yeah. Yeah, on your motorbike. Nothing been... between me and that. <laughs> yeah, and when I said to her, look, that's where it is, it was like, oh. <laughs> you know, and because it's so well overgrown, it hides it even more. So, I um, mean, it's changed even, like I said, since the couple of times that I've been here before. But, uh, right, well, we'll hold fire and I will explain to you what the setup was, obviously. And, uh, yeah, that'd be pretty much it. Like I said, there's not much here, but what is here is an important piece of World War II history in Sussex. So, uh, stay with me and we'll carry this on. Right, so we're going to just give you a brief little tour of everything, just a brief one on this. So the first thing you encounter is you encounter what would have been the obvious guard room, um, pretty much obviously guard in the entrance, which is where we've sort of like kept our bags for today. And as you walk through, you've got these amazing, huge blast-proof shutters. Uh, but one of them is obviously now <laughs> completely overtake. Yeah, careful. It's spiders and everything. Probably still opens, doesn't it? No, it's about to dry, it's really oh yeah, no, it's a bit rusty. Yeah. And then we are now walking up the main corridor, which you've seen us do, which isn't it's sort of as you can see it's sort of slightly bent over these steps and then you've got the beginnings of what would be the cabling sections obviously so the idea is they open up those hatches, they get to check it out. You've then got this one and this one which would have been the offices but Emma's Emma's a bit reluctant in that one where the former homeless person was. Don't feel right to be there. And then you've got, as we walk inside here, so we've got two offices obviously. It is, yeah, pretty bad in there to be fair. Um, then you've got the escape hatch. Like I said, it mirrors the other one. So you've got that here. 
And then you've got, there would have been a reserve generator in here as well. Electricity would have come from the cabling and lighting, which you sort of saw. So it would have been well equipped. Then we've got the, probably would have been the main office building. We're assuming that the chemical toilets, I'm not sure, might have been from here. You can see there's a little recessed wall there and it would have been probably at the end of the corridor, I guess. It's a chemical toilet, so who knows on that one. And then we go through to the main office corridor, which is almost double the length of that opposite one, isn't it, really? Yeah. Um, as you come through again, you've got the recesses for where cabling would have been. In fact, actually, if you look at it, you can see where that cabling has just come through the main section there. It's wrapping itself around like this. And then we come through to here, which again follows outwardly onto the escape hatch there. And obviously part of the, what well, I've just shown you already, there. Oh, and then you've got obviously control room main operations and this would have been what they reckoned was the soundproofing because it looks like that although it does look it's strange it, like it does doesn't it yeah like old school uh so yeah because you can see it all here it just i mean that's definitely a form of soundproofing obviously to cover up the noise probably of the generators and obviously the operations that would have taken place in here so yeah but it was interesting, so when we were walking around, we were just sort of paused and I, I said to Emma about it, I said, do you know, how do you feel about it? And you were like, you really liked it in here, but you did not like the section where the homeless section was really, yeah. did you? It's it, felt sad. it felt really sad for someone to be in that position where this was safe. Yeah, yeah. Especially when we've seen signs of needles and everything else that was here. Not saying that's new by any means, I mean, you know, we don't know I doubt anybody's been living here because the other thing that you notice there's no smell in here no normally if somebody was living in here from experience which I've noticed actually the first thing hits you is the smell sometimes it'll be a strange smell that you'll get and that'll almost give you an indicator of saying somebody's in here or something doesn't feel right but in here there's no humans create a lot of waste yeah and they do and you sort of think to yourself like you know with the history of this place you know but yeah here we are so hopefully everybody you've really enjoyed this just for a brief video there's not much to it but like i said it is an amazing piece of history this bunker really is and served a vital run obviously because we're near cut haven seven sisters we know that whole site was used as a decoy site which i'll probably cover at another point because there are still some remnants there not only that it's smugglers history but when we were here today it was packed today with people but uh yeah there we go the amazing repeater station with well, a bunker i suppose really what everybody would refer it to as but we know it's a repeater station naval i think i've tried to document it as best as possible for its size but it's just nice to actually get in properly this time ease of access and uh, actually document it <laughs> Whatever. so anyway thank you so much emma for joining me on this amazing little adventure. I'm sorry that we didn't bring a good, we should have, that's Thank better, you for bringing it? me and not blinding Yeah, people. sorry, I'm not, people out there watching will know that this is a very rare, very rare treat where my anxiety and everything else allows me to bring someone along. But because Emma had had some exploring experience before, it was a nice little challenge for me to take her to some places that would that I hadn't found that you never found and that you could go back to whenever really thank you so much for coming along with me uh more importantly to everybody out there thank you so much for your love kindness and support in your words of phoenix history because history matters it really does uh and i'll see y'all very soon take care everybody. bye em. bye kapow